My name is Tom Loxton. For the last 31 years, I've been teaching uh, GPS short courses. And in those short courses, I cover four major topics. First of all, what is a GPS and how does it work? What are the design characteristics for the hardware that we use? How can you accentuate the use of a GPS receiver by using in conjunction with it other kinds of hardware such as differential navigation and pseudo-satellites and interferometry techniques? And finally, how are we using the GPS for high-end uses such as the navigation of airplanes, air traffic control, the navigation of satellites, and its use on the International Space Station, and also plate tectonics. So we cover a broad range of topics having to do with the Navstar Global Positioning System. Altogether, the course covers 17 different topics. Here's a typical one here on the screen, the Navstar Global Positioning System, and its three major segments, the space segment, the user segment, and the control segment. And in the last part of that presentation, I covered the six giant steps toward GPS modernization, the things that the United States military and the government are doing to make it perform more efficiently. And then we examined some special problems associated with spaceborne receivers, in particular the spaceborne receivers that are used on modern booster rockets and modern satellites, and also the International Space Station. And we go into some detail on how you go about designing a receiver that will work effectively on the International Space Station, including the measurement of attitude angles. And the last part deals more specifically with the characteristics of the space shuttle. Now, these are the three major segments of the GPS. The space segment, in which the satellites generate signals that they broadcast repeatedly down to the ground. Basically, each satellite transmits two kinds of information. One is, what orbit am I in at the moment? The other is, what time is it? The timing pulses that come down from a GPS satellite have to be incredibly accurate because a light wave or a radio wave travels one foot in a billionth of a second. So therefore, we have to synchronize all of the satellites in the GPS constellation, all 24 of them, at all times to within 13 billionths of a second. We do this in part by developing atomic clocks that, if we could get them to run that long, would lose or gain only one second every 300,000 years. The two kinds of information that come down from the face segment are picked up by the user segment on the ground. Today, that is approximately one billion GPS receivers scattered around the globe used for navigating boats, airplanes, backpackers, uh, precision military weapons, uh, frontline troops, taxi cabs, Boy Scouts, and so on. Now, if the satellites always knew what orbits they were in and they always knew what time it is, that's all we would need. But actually, it turns out they forget what time it is and they forget what orbits they're in. That is, the clocks drift and their perturbations acting on the satellite orbits. So we need a third piece called the ground segment. The purpose of the ground segment is to track the satellites as they sweep across the sky and upload them with fresh ephemeris constants defining their orbits and fresh clock correction factors that tell them precisely what time it is. Now, this is some information about the operation of the space segment. The space segment furnishes accurate time and satellite ephemeris coordinates to a worldwide class of users. In order to do that, we have launched into space now about 30 GPS satellites in this rather remarkable constellation. This shows a constellation of 24 of those satellites, the nominal constellation that we were building toward when we first launched the GPS satellites. Those satellites are 10,898 nautical miles above the Earth. They're whizzing around the Earth at about 8,400 miles per hour. There are six orbital rings of them, four satellites in each ring nominally. They're spaced 90 degrees apart. And those satellites are three-axis stabilized. That means the main body of the spacecraft points always toward the Earth, and the wing-like solar rays on the sides of the spacecraft swivel and tilt to pick up the perpendicular rays of the sun with enough energy to generate 710 watts end-of-life electrical power. Now, in the course, we have a bonus for the students. Each student is given a 
GPS receiver for their own use. And this is a very capable receiver, capable of navigating automobiles with great precision. It displays the location of the car always at the center of the screen, and the road ahead always points toward the top, and the highways are shown in proper perspective. It has a voice synthesizer chip inside that gives directions to the users as they're driving their cars. Three different times it will warn the user to get into the proper lane to make the next turn and it will direct the user optimally from whatever location in the country he may start out at to whatever destination in the country he wants to end up at. And by the way, if you miss a turn, nothing bad happens. The receiver will merely recalculate your orbit from where you find yourself to where you want to go. So you don't have to go back and retrace your steps. They're wonderful little receivers and the students really enjoy receiving this special gift in conjunction with the course.